Hi and uh, welcome back. This is the, the final part of the tutorial. Um, so good to see that you made it so far. Um, it will be slightly uh, easier maybe because uh, part of what you'll see is a repetition from the, from the third part. Um, and that's because uh, I'm also going to compute a network characteristic uh, partly following the same procedure. Uh, but then again um, this measure, this popularity measure we're going to uh, compute has its own issues and we need to solve these issues. Okay so here's the research question again um, but now I have a different hypothesis. Um, it reads uh, popularity is positively correlated to smoking um, and that's something that just popped up in my mind. It's, uh, it's not derived from any kind of theory but I just thought that that would be interesting to uh, analyze or it might be a, a derivation from theory but then it's a coincidence. So, um, popularity and smoking. Um, could we create a popularity measure? Yes, I think we can. Um, so there are probably several ways to do that. Um, I, I, I thought of the, f the following. So I thought, of why, why don't we um, calculate all incoming ties um, of name generators, best friend, desired friend, and important opinion. So we already saw the best friend name generators uh, but there were also questions about uh, who do you want to be friends with and there was also a question about whose, imp uh, whose op opinion is important to you. So the idea is that um, the more people call me my their best friend or the more uh, people want to become friends with me or the more people who find my opinion important, the more popular I am. Now, does it sound like a straightforward idea to, to count the number of incoming ties in that sense? Um, so the, the problem is a little bit new because we have to combine these different name generators and as you'll see we'll have to find a way to deal with duplicate cases because sometimes I can be a best friend as well as someone whose imp uh, opinion is important. So, um, let's start by uh, opening the data. Th these are the data I saved earlier. Uh, this is not in the right position, like this. And mm -hmm, this one either. Sorry for that. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to throw away the things I don't need. Uh, I often liked like that because I gives a nice overview of what I'm doing. So I start with the identification variable and then the three different name generators I just mentioned. Okay, and now we're going to create this popularity measure and as, um, as I said it's partly the same procedure. So we already saw the varsity to cases command creates a ties uh, data set. Um, in a previous example we, m we made a friend variable here. So we said make friend from a number of friend variables. Um, and what we do now is we not only include friend, the, the, the 12 uh, friend variables, but also the rest. So in a sense we don't care about where the tie comes from, uh, but we just want to include any of these ties in our data set. So I create one variable called alter and that can include any tie that comes from these 36 name generator var variables. And I'm also creating an index. Um, after that I uh, just rearrange the order of the variables somewhat. So let's have a look. Okay, so here's the result. So uh, as before we have a ties uh, data set, as you can see here in the uh, ID variable. Um, we have alters, um, but the, the uh, index is different. So it previously it was just a count of the, of the number of rows basically, but now you see numbers like 25 and 26 and, and that's because um, the index reflects the, uh, the, the position of the original variable in the list. So in this list so if, if you see the number 25 
Well, there were fir first the word 12 friend variables, then there were 12 uh, desired friends variables. So that means that uh, the 25th column was the, actually the, the first uh, variable of uh, important opinion. So this is a person uh, whose uh, opinion is important to this person. Okay, um, and as I already told you, we have a slight problem here, and it's even better visible if I sort cases. Um, and that is uh, that we have uh, duplicate cases here. So here, you see, two exactly the same ties. So that's because uh, this person was men mentioned as a good friend and also as someone whose Im uh, opinion was important. Um, and I guess you can debate whether you want how you want to uh, count those. I, I think uh, uh, we want to count them as as one as one tie. One, one popularity tie. Or at least uh, for the sake of this exercise I want to cal uh, calculate them as one tie. So that means that I want to remove all the cases that are duplicates. Um, and I do that by uh, using the match files again. So this should look familiar by now. So, uh, I use uh, match files but, but for a new purpose now and that's uh, for the purpose of the subcommand first here. So I say uh, match files, but nothing is actually matched because there's only one file, the current one. Um, and I say uh, the identification variables indicated by the slash by subcommand are id and alter. And what the first does is it just flags every first combination of the group. So of the group formed by id and alter. So every first observation gets a 1, every second, third, etc. observation gets a 0. And that's very convenient if we want to know which cases are duplicates. So let's run this and let's see what it does. So now that we have a new ver variable called first, and as you'll see it performs its task nicely because these three ties are all unique. So the first uh, observation within their ID alter group. But here we have one that is actually a duplicate. So that's not the first um, observation of the ID alter group. And then of course the, the rest of the procedure is straightforward because we can just select the cases who are the first observation. Right, which is another way of saying uh, that all second, third, etc. cases will be deleted. And I delete the, the first variable also in the end. Okay, so that's that. And now comes the final thing we need to do, and that is um, the, the count the number of times that a certain alter is mentioned because the more the, the more often the, the alter is mentioned, the more popular. Um, so we need to find a way to um, do that. And we do that uh, by using the aggregate command. The, the aggregate command uh, computes uh, variables um, at a certain specified aggregated level. And the aggregated level we're going to specify here is alter. Um, and let me just sort these cases by alter first because we need to do that anyway. And then I can show it more clearly. So what? So we could consider this as a group. And so it's three cases, three rows in our data that have the uh, same value for alter. So aggregate um, uh, calculates information within a certain group. So I can say, okay, within this group, I want to calculate something. And what do I want to calculate? Well, I just want to calculate the number of cases. And that's what I'm going to do in the aggregate command. So the command is aggregate. 
and then an out file but I'm just saying okay put it in the current file here um, and then a break subcommand and that's simply the identification uh, variable so the identification of the group which is the uh, alter variable in my case and then well that might look a little confusing um, this this slash pop is not a sub command but it's actually the name of a variable so after you specified out file and break you can start um, specifying new variables so I want to create a new variable that, um, which name is pop as in popularity and it's a function of another variable it's the the function is an u which stands for a number number of cases so popularity is a number of cases of the ID variable so I'm saying within this group I want to calculate the number of different ID values which is 3 here okay let's see if it works and here it is so you see that these data are aggregated so they're also at the individual level so this is actually another way of creating an individual level data set so we probably kind of done the same thing with the um, uh, cases to vars commands but it can also be done with aggregate and this in this case aggregate is a really convenient so we have uh, identification numbers of individuals and we have a popularity score here so the number of times that these persons were mentioned by others and because our alters are of course also just the egos in our data set because we have the full network we can also say rename the variable, variable alter to id and then we're back to our original setup um, okay so that's uh, the calculation of the popular popularity measure but I wanna do two final things and the first Oh well, I do it in one command actually. So I, what I want is um, I want to re-include the original variables, and I want to re-include, as you m might remember from the the previous part, I want to re-include the uh, uh, pupils who did not uh, report any ties. And so they they dropped out in the first step of the conversion, the conversion to the tie dataset. So I do that with match files. I match with uh, tutorial sav by id as I did before. Oh, and I need to execute this as usual. Um, okay, so that's the result is over here. So you see that all the the variables are back again, and also what? Well, let's have a look here. Also, the persons without dice are back again, and they have uh, uh, their popularity score missing because there were no dice to calculate the popularity measure for. So that's actually something you probably want to change. So you probably want to recode this to zero. Probably want to re because it's, uh, yeah, no ties is uh, equals zero, zero popularity, I think. Um, okay, so you, you probably want to do that. But uh, let's have a look anyway at what we find. So this is the popularity measure we created most people are mentioned four times uh, some people are mentioned a lot of times so I'm really popular um, and uh, you can also, so also see that there's no one who was mentioned zero times so that's uh, in fact not right but I, I calculated the correlation anyway so uh, what's the correlation between smoking and popularity uh, well based on these uh, numbers turns out to be negative uh, so we see a negative correlation of 0 0.04 around 0 0.04 um, so that was uh, well that was actually quite surprising to me but I'm not sure whether it's a really an important finding because that's uh, it's a very small uh, correlation and it's also, also just significant but um, anyway the important thing is that we 
now know how to calculate these measures. So uh, we can start using them in the analyses. Uh, so this is the end of the four parts of the tutorial. Um, I hope it helps and um, I wish you uh, good luck with your assignments.